Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Clean Break, a podcast dealing with art and business, powered by Always Art. I'm your host, Matt Gondek. Joining me today, Maxime Richard. Maxime, how you doing? Good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no worries. You own a company called Maximus Communications. Yes. Hey everybody, welcome back to Clean Break, a podcast dealing with art and business, powered by Always Art. I'm your host, Matt Gondek. Where... It's like your name almost. Is that, right. is that where it came up, came from? <laughs> Actually, someone gave me um, the idea during grad school to when you, she told me, it's like when you op- want to open up a company one day, you should use Maximus. It's a cool name. Yeah. So I kind of just went with it. <laughs> did she ever come back to you and be like, you did it. Give me like yeah. a little bit of money here. Exactly. Did exactly. she really? But not for money, but not for money. <laughs> okay, good. So you're here because you own a PR company. And I've actually been interviewing a couple of your clients recently. I had Dan Lamb on here, Chantel. I is that it? No, I did. I did the Mondu Gallery guys. They you were working yeah. with them for a little bit. Jan, I think you went. Yeah, Jan as well. Oh, that's right. I, I actually just found out this morning you work with Jan. I didn't know that. Andy just kind of throws me people. Um, so you're here because you know this. Like I told you before we hit record, a lot of young artists, you know, they want to work with a gallery. They want a manager. They want PR but they don't really understand what PR does or how to approach a PR company or how to, you know, get press. A lot of artists also, I think, are just hesitant or nervous to really ask someone to talk about them for them Mm -hmm. because it's kind of like a lot of artists are shy. So I want to talk to you about your company and who you are and then also kind of just shine some light on what a PR company can do for artists. So i grab my little notes here. So let's talk about you and your company first. Maximum Communications, you're based in New York. Maximus Communications. Yeah. It is Maximus. <laughs> See, I said that when I said Maximus, I'm like, uh, I think I said it wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I've been uh, working in PR New York for over 15 years. Got it. Um, I actually started, I'm from Montreal, Quebec, Canada originally. I moved there and I did um, various internships and the first job that I got uh, after my internships. Back in the day, that was through Craigslist. I got my first PR job. Isn't that amazing? So that was my first PR job. And then I worked for several agencies over the years. Um, Started doing fashion. I did some luxury goods, accessories. Um, I did a bit of design, fine jewelry, beauty, a whole bunch of different stuff. But um, towards the end of my last agency, I started doing design, architecture, interiors. And then... um, I've always been kind of wanting to start my own thing. Like, Mm -hmm. I always liked dealing with press and dealing with clients, but I always hated working for someone. Uh Um, I always knew, like, I had to work for myself. So I kind of, while I was working at the last agency, I kind of, um, a friend friend who has a lot of businesses in New York kind of just pushed me, just create a website, get a business card, have it start an email and pretend like you have a company. Just scrappy business. That's And that's what I did. That's what you got to do, though. Yeah. And I kind of, exactly. And I kind of did that. And then. Ever since then, yeah, it's been I think, six and a half years now. Um, now, but we mostly focus on art and um, design. So again, like design will be like, could be objects, interiors, architecture, but most of our clients, I would say maybe 75% at the moment are mostly art. So let's, let's talk about some of the, the things that your, your company offers. Like what, I know you kind of just mentioned them a little bit there, but let's really get into it. And one of the things is media relations. Mm-hmm. What is media relations? Yeah, so... Um, that's basically dealing with press. Okay. Us pitching press, introducing them to a new client, sending them press releases, media alerts, um, whether it's an exhibition, um, it's a collaboration with an artist and a brand, um, looking for specific story angles or stories that they do or columns to try to get our clients to those specific columns. Um, so, and then, obviously, then we do events, obviously, inviting them to events, RSVPs, and things like that. Um, so that's in a nutshell. It's, it's, yeah, so we have, I mean, different types of, we have a lot of lists. We have, obviously, um, the art list, we have design, we have luxury lists, uh, lifestyle, we, we have local lists, like the LA list, for example, or local New York lists, or we also deal with editors in, all over the world, in the art world, and luxury, like art, um, whether it's Asia or, like, Europe, we kind of, we kind of do, I mean, our focus is the U.S., but we also do international. I mean, we, I've worked on things in Europe too. Like publications always need content. Yes. So okay. there's so many different, like I said, there's so many different things 
to talk about in profiles. When we're talking about features and profiles on an artist, that doesn't really matter like what you're doing at the moment. Yeah, yeah they point. will talk about it. They will bring it in. Oh, they recently did that. They're working on this yeah. to talk about. Um, but there's so many opportunities. Um, and we get reached out all the time. Editors, oh, I'm looking for something. Do you have, do you have an artist for this? Or I'm looking for something like a studio visit. Or I'm looking at, to do a, a story on, on uh, 10 new artists in LA to look out for. Or we're doing a story about, like there's, I was working with an editor for the New York Magazine. They have a, a section that says "Steal My Vacation," some cool vacations that's any like interesting personalities have been on. You know, so there's all these different types of stories. Um, I worked with the Four Seasons magazine recently on a feature about um, they were just looking at interesting artists and designers to highlight. Okay. So there's always things to talk about. Yeah, um, but from what you just said, though, like that would only you'd only be able to use your client one time for that. Okay, it's like New York Times. Hey, I want to write an article about an artist. Well, here's Matt and his space. Okay, great. But now the next time you reach out, you can't really use that client for the same reason, right? You'd have to come up with something new. Yeah, but also New York Times is very particular. Like the top ones, like New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, once they do a feature on someone, they won't do it again for a couple of years. Got it. Uh, so, yeah. Not sure, but, like, like a Steve Jobs so like, or like an Elon Musk. What we do, yeah. Like, I mean, unless, yeah, or unless you're like, you know, the politics and it's every day. But, um, yeah, I mean, we basically go through every publication. We, we basically create a list of our targeted publications. And then we go through all of them and look for specific story angles or where our client would fit in all those. Got it. So, okay. you know, there's a lot of work behind the scenes that people don't see. They'd be like, oh, just like, you know, sending an interview, an article, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's way more than that. You it's have like, to also like nurture those connections. Yes. The like, journalists. Of course. Like we reach out to them, we'll go for dinner with them, or we'll, um, you know, talk about her. It's always good to have that face-to-face. -to -face of course. To talk. And when we have a lot going on, it's easier to just meet up with them and just give them an overview. Or like, hey, like, this is what we're working on. Maybe we, we could give you an exclusive for this publication. What do you want in there? Like a lot of freelance writers, um, that'll happen because they're working for a lot of publications. They're like, okay, cool, let me pitch this for Artnet. Um, I'll, I'll take this as an exclusive, and then we... You know, so there's there's so much behind the scenes that obviously the client and people don't know Got that it. goes into just that. It, it's not like, you know, like for example, even CJ, it took like almost two years for them to do a feature in New York Times. Oh, really? So, okay. you know, there's other publications uh, I worked on. It took like, what, like nine months to get something in Forbes, uh, a year, a couple of years to get something in Artnet. And then once they start covering an Artnet, then they do every show. Like, it, you know, a lot of it, I, I always say it takes time. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a snowball effect. It must be it, hard, though, because a client, I know I'm like this myself. Mm -hmm. In my mind, if I'm paying a company to give me press and I don't see immediate results, I'm kind of like, well, am I wasting my time? Yeah. But you said it naturally it takes time for this to work. Yeah. I mean, we will always get some immediate results. Like, we always tell oh, really? clients, we'll get you at least minimum two interviews a month, you know? Okay. Um, there's, it's just, there's, I can't tell a client, okay, I'll get you in this specific publication by this date. Like it doesn't got work it, got like it, that. Got like it. Okay. even if we pitch, like if we pitch freelance writer, they have to pitch to their editor and if their editor approves and then it has to, also sometimes has to get approved by the editor in chief. And then, you know, so it's like, there's a lot of process involved mm -hmm. of um, depending how big the publication, if it's like a smaller publication, it's like an online publication or blog. I mean, obviously the, the the editor is the main person, and then that goes quickly. Yeah. Um, and then there's like a whole, yeah, this, it's, a, it's a process. It takes, like, some things will happen right away. Some things might take out. Out of the blue, I might get an email six months from now. Hey, let me do a profile on this client. I like that, that actually happened when we were doing uh, Maison Kitsune, which is a fashion brand I worked with years ago, and they, they do music and all sorts of stuff. They had an, like, I got an email, it was like a year later from Bloomberg. Like, okay, let's do an H page feature on them. <laughs> Amazing. I know. So, like, this stuff happens all the time. Yeah. It's just... Um, what happens if... Which is you, CJ. No, it's not you because you're really close with them. A client that you've had for maybe half a year, six months, okay? And then that client decides to move on and they're, they're no longer hiring your company. Mm -hmm. But something you've been working on for that client... Like, let's say you've been pitching them to, to Juxtapose Magazine. Just whatever. Yeah, yeah. Six months you've been working with the client, they're they're gone, you're no longer with that client. But now Juxtapose is like, hey, it's like it's like eight months later. Hey, we really want to interview your client now. What do you do in that situation? Do you go back to the client and say, Hey, like I got this for you, or do you tell the publication, 
I'm not working with them anymore. Oh yeah. So what we do normally in is in our contract. So after let's say it's a six months contract specifically or anything, if there's any work that comes out of it, reactive. We say it's reactive. Okay. So, what does reactive mean? So we would. Um, so I mean, we're not proactively pitching that client anymore. It's you know not proactive PR, reactive PR. Got it. We call it, and that we you know that's something that we bill for. It's included in our contract, saying like you know it's minimum this per hour or minimum fifty minutes for this fee. It's how we bill. So that that's how we would do it. Okay. Because it's also so we wouldn't like it's not like a full. We wouldn't be like hey here's you know this flat amount for this. There's back, there'll be a lot of back and forth, but um, that's how we do it. And that's probably the best way to do it too. It's also just for our time and effort as well. Yeah. And, and so it was you, not you, something, and it's also better for us to manage it than the artist and the client to manage it. Themselves. So you would email your past client and say, hey, I have so-and-so interest in speaking with you. Would you like me to move forward with this? Correct. If, if so, it's going to be an hourly rate or whatever you, that's how that works. Yeah. Okay. I was curious about that. Yeah. That's normally how it works. Okay. Um, because... And there's, there's some clients that will work on, you know, one project a year or a couple projects a year. And that's what we do in between. We call it. And there's like, there's one client that we worked uh, for a long time. She's an interior designer. She's an architect. She's an industrial designer as well. That's what we do in between stuff. Because I've been working with her for so long, like six mm -hmm. years, that things will come up and yeah. someone will pop up. Hey, can I like to use her in a quote for this piece? And then we just do it that way. And for her too, she prefers, I mean, I, I've worked with her for six years, so I know really her brand. That's the other thing is the relationship. You get to know the clients. I know what they like. I know when they work. I know like yeah. at what time is good for an interview or like... And you start knowing how they would respond. Like sometimes with some clients, we just do all their answers. Now we review, we we do all their interview. Cause That's we, great. We know them well, and some it depends on the person. Some person wants to write out the whole answers, but some of them we know them well that we just do it, and then they edit. Like even like press releases, we'll write their own quote. Yeah. Because okay. we just know their voice. It's just that beginning, you know, it takes time because we need to learn their voice and of course we that whole process. But yeah. yeah, like after that, like a lot of the times we normally start with clients for six months, and it's the beginning. And it's building all of that. Got it. Okay. I, I know I'm going a bit of... No, it's totally fine. This, I think the more information here, the better. Because I, I think this is such like a... A lot of people don't really understand what you guys do. So yeah. I think it's better to really explain I think it's it. just PR in general. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the last thing I want to... Before we dive into another thing is the last service you guys offer... I'm just going to go, we're going to pass event planning. You guys do event planning, but I think everyone knows what event planning is. So I want to talk about you guys also do social media for people. Mm -hmm. So are, does that mean running all their social media accounts? Is that like strategizing what they should post? Like, what are you guys doing? Yeah. Just to talk about event planning, we don't full on do, um, it's more now we just, we'll host events for press. We don't do the full planning. Like, Got it. Okay. That's like a whole thing that we used to do. And it's like a monster. <laughs> it's like the catering, this and that, yes. and that. That I don't do. Like setting up art. And, no. Like we'll, we'll host press. Like our job is to invite press, industry people, influencers to our, to make an event successful. Got it. Okay. That's okay. in terms okay, of okay. events. That's what we do specifically, which is part of the retainer if we're doing like a ongoing thing. Yeah. Okay. And in terms of social media, we only do Instagram. We you know, TikTok again. At the oh, just Instagram. Yeah, it's another big monster. Like we have to like, again, we're like, you know, we're full war and we hire people, but there's certain things that we do and certain things that we don't do. I can't okay. do everything. Um, Were you helping with like content creation or you just yeah. like? Yeah, okay. so Instagram will do like, well, we, we did it for, a, we're doing it now. A new client we started with. Um, we're doing the PR and their Instagram. Um, so that's, yeah, creating everything from A to Z. Okay. Um, doing the calendar coming up. Normally, like, um, and the best, the best situation for Instagram is they send us all a variety of their images, and then we come up with like a strategy. And, or, like on Mondays, we'll post about something like this, like a theme, or maybe on Wednesday we'll post about Got that. It. An inspiration post will be on this, and we'll do stories here. Like we'll come up with all that, and it's kind of good because also we can work together with the PR. If you're launching something, a new series or collaboration, we kind of link it so it kind of goes at the same time. Yeah, I think that's really beneficial because like there's yeah. so many times when I'm creating a body of work or something, you just don't have time to come up with social media content. It's a lot of work. It and, is. You it's know, a lot. And some people are like, oh, just give it to the intern. And it's like, <laughs> people, it was like crap. I, yeah, and I see that a lot. But I get there's, you know, there's budget too. So like we do offer um, like hourly consulting calls, whether it's PR or for like Instagram or 
sometimes we'll offer, well, it's actually part of our list. We'll, we'll do just a strategy for you or just a strategy, just, just a strategy. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Or, um, like we'll just develop a press kit for now, or we'll do a whole strategy for, for your Instagram instead of doing all, you know, and obviously this depends on budget as well. You know? Yeah. So we, so we offer other services as well than just like a full on monthly, uh, retainer package. Got it. Got it. All right. So let's move on and talk about other things. We kind of got the overview of your company, what you guys do. Uh, I wrote down brand identity is everything. So it sounds like you try to help the artist or whoever you work with really whittle down and define their brand and make it really easy for everyone to know what that person does. Yeah. And we, we've actually started doing that. We're doing that right now with a new client. It's, about we're going to redo the logo, redo the, the website, scrap the whole Instagram and start from scratch. So, and then then work on, you know, the artist statement, the bio. It needs to be consistent, but also I tell people too, it's like, you're in art, like you're in design, like it has to look fucking good. Like, yeah. that's what you do. Yeah. You're in fashion, like it has to look fucking cool. Like yeah. you're not like... You know, I don't know what, but like. <laughs> no, I get it. Yeah, it should be. I mean, it's like social you know, like, reflection. Uh, I don't know. Huh? It's a reflection of who you well, are. Well, exactly. And it's so important, I say. And sometimes people will be like, we can't start with you yet in PR because you need to get all that together. We need to start from scratch and do that together. And I, I've done that with other clients, too. Um, and I say, we'll pause for that. Let's focus on this first. Let's get the Instagram going really well. Then we, because the press, you know, it has to be a nice package deal you know how much you know again like so many emails they get a day they're gonna go right away they're gonna spend two seconds they're gonna go to your instagram your website they don't like it boom that's it yeah that's simple yeah the press release they might read a sentence look at an image and then move on of if course. they're interested they'll continue so we need to catch their attention it's the yeah. same thing of like you want to catch gallery's attention you want to these you know these top customers or targets you know yeah so it's it's really 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 important um, it is. I mean, I obviously don't know much as much as you do about all this, but like I tell young artists all the time, like artists, once you get work attention of a gallery, start getting brand deals, but like you look at their Instagram and it's, here's a painting. Here's a bowl of spaghetti. Here's my daughter. Yes. Here's me buying a video game. Here's a drawing. And it's like, get rid of all this stuff that doesn't pertain to your business. Like yeah. people do like to peek behind the curtain, but like, if it's like that sporadic, like your brand is just like all over the place. It's crazy. Yeah, and then have, have it different. Like maybe your TikTok is more behind the scenes kind of footage. Yeah. But for your Instagram, or you can create a template. Like we do create templates for people that, but it'll, you know, or you can do it yourself on Canva, you know, just, or like your grid is it make it, it's really important Yeah. to have a really, it's, this is how you're presenting yourself. So it's, totally. it's important to take the time and don't rush it. I always tell people, but at least what you're putting out there, that needs to be, you know. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, pe people just make such a quick decision about things. Like they're gonna spend a second looking at your whatever. Yeah, it needs to be really. And same here too. Like I want to redo so much of my website, of uh, the Instagram. Like uh, it's like a whole thing I got to do as well. But I mean, there's so many, so many hours so much... in a day, and yeah. also too, it's like, yeah. I mean, I also my priorities are clients. So <laughs> of course, but it, it's it's a whole thing. Yeah, yeah like what yeah. are you gonna? What type of stories are you going to do? But yeah, I agree. Like I see that a lot. People will post a random picture of their dog or, you know, like make a personal one then. Yeah. Do a personal. I have a personal one and then you have a business Totally. One. Yeah, that's what I do. It's, yeah. You know, it's very simple. And then you're, and then if you don't, you don't have a lot of time on your business one, then post less, but just post something good. Yep. Even well, if you're doing it once a week, just post something good. Quantity <laughs> over quality. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Less is more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I. Okay, so let's change gears here and really break this down. For people listening, I thought we could just use, I'm going to make up this fictitious person, okay? They're a fine artist. They've been, they've been painting now for about five years. They're okay what they do. They have a, at least one gallery show a year. They've done a handful of commission jobs, but they're interested in getting PR, Okay. And they contact you, and let's just say you know this. You decide to work with this fictitious artist. So this is really just break down, you know, what you guys do and like how a PR company works with an artist. So like, 
Okay. And you can make up, you can fill in the blanks there, whatever they, what kind of art they do, if they're male, it doesn't matter. But like what, what are the first steps you do? And I know you mentioned some of this, but mm -hmm. let's break it down. What are the first steps you do with this artist you decide to work with? And let's say, I'll just give you some stuff to, 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 to work on. I, let's just say that they have an art show in six months from now. And for the next six months, they're just going to be making paintings for this art show. Right. And they decide to get a six month retainer because for the next six months I'll work with you up until the art show. So we'll include the we'll include the art show in the yeah, yeah. six months. Okay, so let's say um, the artist is based in Chicago, uh, and it's a male. Um, so let's say the show is month four in a retainer, so it's a six months, right? So I always we always say we need to introduce the, the artist to press before we just randomly talk to them about a show or an event or a collaboration, because it just kind of doesn't make sense. Like, who is this person? Yeah. We need to educate the press. So the first month, no, normally, it's really getting all our ducks in a row. So what we'll do is, like I mentioned before, we'll go through and we'll review if there, if there is an artist statement. If not, we put one together with them. Uh, we do a short bio and a long bio. A short bio, like a boilerplate, a brief overview of the artist and their work. And then we'll do a, a longer one, which will... Um, send out later and then we'll go through everything we need good headshots like that's another thing like i was talking social media we need good images like it's the most important thing in pr good images like yeah. so you need really good headshots then your work is it nice nicely photographed is it professionally photographed like your headshots everything has to be professionally photographed i know it costs money but then it's better to wait and do it later than do something that looks bad of course. Because they won't, they won't publish it. I mean, I always tell people, like, look at the publications you want to be in. Like, if you want to be in hype art, look at what they're featuring. Look at the type of pictures. Yeah. You know, look at the type of art that's in there, too. So, so we develop all that, the press kit. And then once we get that together, um, then we'll, with the long bio, we'll use that as an introduction. So we'll do introducing X, the name of the client. But before we actually send it out, then we create, we do a whole strategy. So we look... Um, we create media lists, like targeted media lists for that specific client. So we'll go through like, who can we pitch what I've kind of mentioned before, like what publications, where in that publication. And if this artist is from Chicago, we, we will do a Chicago outreach, Illinois outreach. And if, you know, he's, um, he's a male, so we'll also reach out to um, publications that feature men's too, like uh, maybe GQ or maybe Esquire or maybe Hype Beast. You know, if it's a woman, high bay, like we look at, we go through all of that. We create all of that. Yeah. And then we, we introduce, we do a launch. Okay. We send it out. And we normally always get responses and interviews from that. Okay. This and is month two of the six we, months? Yeah. So month two, we would start, uh, we would disseminate the, um, the introduction. Got it. Okay. And then during that month two, then we're really working on about that. We're getting responses. And then we con we're constantly pitching. We're basically pitching on clients almost every day. Yeah. Okay. You know, except for Fridays. We don't pitch on Fridays. <laughs> Why? Because people are checked out. <laughs> okay. And, and especially in the summer, there's summer Fridays in New York. The people work every other Friday or half a day. Uh -huh. Fridays is just never a good idea. Like even to do a show Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's just not. Um, do a show, like an art show? That too, to do a press event. Okay, okay. We try okay. to avoid anything Friday. Because they're, they're, they're out with, with their friends. It's well, that's the big... thing too. Like they're out, they're living their life. They don't want to go for a work thing on Saturday morning. Of course not. Okay. So, so that's how we'll get into that. And then as we start the you know, month through, then we'll start working, getting all our stuff ready to go for the show. Okay. So let's say the show opens month four. Then we'll draft a press release. We'll con let's say there, we'll contact the gallery. We'll have a call with the gallery and our client. And then we'll get a quote from the gallery, get a quote from our client, put together a press release, start div working on a press kit for that specific exhibition, um, and then work on that. So we'll, and then in the meantime too, we're like I said, we're still pitching for like profiles, interviews, all those type of opportunities. So that way, at least then there's like there's everything's ready to go for that artist. They have their press kit, everything's ready to go there. Uh -huh. They have all that ready to go. They've gotten some press before the show actually opens, so the press will know who they are. Yeah. They're starting to get momentum, and then it will continue. And then after that, it, it depends. Then we'll say after that depending how much work you have. If you have a year ahead and you have like three exhibitions, two collaborations, your product drops and all that, then we will do it as an ongoing. Some clients, six months, it's a year ongoing. Because, yeah. But normally we do contracts like that. But then if it's just a show, 
then it could be like two, yeah. three months if it's just a collaboration. So just sorry to pause you here. So for everyone listening, there's really two different ways to work with a PR company, either a, a short or I'm sorry, a fixed amount of time for a specific thing like a product launch or a gallery show, or there's an ongoing every every month throughout the year and you're just constantly pitching and Hey, hey, artists, what are you working on right now? Like, hey, I, are you coming out with a new podcast? Like, you're just creating, you're just pitching all the time. Yeah, pitching all the time. TV, online, I mean, TV, if it makes sense. Um, obviously, online publications, print publications, could be newsletters, podcasts. Yeah. How big is TV anymore? Do, do um, I actually got, um, I've gotten a couple of TV things this year for clients at a show. Um, but it's mostly local. Like, it's hyper-local. If you're doing a show, like I said, if you're doing a show in um, Seattle, for example. Yeah. Opening, then it, we would pitch all the Like locals. the news. Like yeah, hey. the local. Because they all do lifestyle stories, right? It can't totally. Just, they can't just do, like, depressing, like, yeah. global warming and murders all the time. <laughs> they have the whole section. They have to do lifestyle. And that's actually what they all love to do. Um, we just, uh, I did one for CBS in New York. And she, that, that was... She was telling me the host, the producer, like, yeah, like, I'm hoping to do this unless there's like a murder. <laughs> like, I'll be there to cover. And it's, yeah. and, it, and it's fun to do. And it's also great because you, it's important to get that local coverage, especially you're doing a show, right? Probably breaks up the monotony of their job, too. Like, yeah. not that, not that, I mean, a murder's terrible, but like every day, like de- reporting on depressing stuff. Yeah. You know, it's like, I'm sure they enjoy like the. Oh, they, they absolutely love it. They absolutely love to come yeah. out and do a fun piece. Um, so, yeah, so that's. Um, it, it, then it depends on the magnitude of the scale of something as well, too, right? Um, it has to make sense. And again, like there's a specific. Then every again every event every project is different of who we target. Yeah, we have to really you know we have to get all the information and then we strategize and then we come up with a strategy and then we we just move forward. Got it. But then once we start with an artist and once we've got that ready to go, then it's so easy. Then I'd be like, hey, we're doing this. In six months, okay, let's start at this date. The contract will be two months, you know, depending on what it is. And that's it. Yeah. And then, then it becomes so easy. Like, yeah, at the beginning, it's annoying. Especially, I know it's annoying for the artist, too, because it's like, we got to go through everything. The pictures, the text, the review, you have to prove everything. You have to prove the. So, like, we got to get the client approval on everything. You know, press releases, text, images. We don't send anything without client approval. So, the yeah. beginning's always annoying. And I always tell people, and people get frustrated, but I'm like, this I tell hard. them from the beginning... Like, it's going to suck. But, yeah, and yeah. then we do a whole interview with them. They get but once off. it's done, it's done. Yeah. Then they and have then everything. Done, yeah, it could be some people will reach out like once a year. They do a big thing. Yeah. Or like, oh, I'm just doing this collab with a brand, but I want you to represent me. I don't want just the brand PR to do this. Can you yeah. help me out with this? Uh-huh. And so, you know, or sometimes it'll be like, hey, can you just do, um, I want to hire you. Can you write a press release? Just write a press release for this. Or could we just do some consulting calls on this thing? I'm not yeah. sure. We do that as well. Got it. Because we, you know, and obviously depends on so many different factors and it depends on budget too. You know, I, I know we get it. Some people don't have the budget to do six months right away, but maybe we just do, maybe we just do your press kit for now, or maybe you just do um, calls and, you know, maybe sometimes you could do your own PR, but obviously that's not the best strategy, but some people do. I, I get it. It's like yeah. Possible. They just need a little help, like getting things set up. Yeah. Got it. Got it. I was going to ask you how your company gets paid, but it just... Sounds like it's either there's a monthly retain, sorry, a monthly retainer, or project by project, or some people just want help setting up their their bio and their artist statement. Yeah, so it's like we we offer like a, a la carte services, a document with that. It could be like I said, it could be hourly for a consulting call. It could be a specific flat fee mm-hmm. for let's say a press kit, a strategy, copywriting, or normally, but normally we do monthly retainers because it's just hard to do hourly with clients. I know some people do that some ass but for us it's just a bit of a nightmare it's like all right this editor emailed we emailed for what six minutes i gotta put six yeah that's annoying isn't it and then when you're working on a feature there's so much back and forth back with the clients we're dealing with other press we're working on a a launch and then it becomes an absolute nightmare yeah and it's just such a waste of time for us that we don't really like having to keep track of all those hours it's like we're not like lawyers you know like yeah (laughs) so i I mean lawyers so much oh my god (laughs) but like so that's more that's more efficient for us as well. But we don't like, you know, there's some agencies in New York will charge a crazy amount of prices, but we all, you know, our prices are pretty, pretty affordable compared to, like I said, a lot of small, medium, large firms in New York because we don't have an office as well. We all work from home. 
Oh, right on. So that we're able yeah. to offer a lower price too, uh -huh. um, which I like as well. Your prices do seem pretty good. I mean, I know what they are. And like, I've, I've spoken to other PR firms from the whole op opposite ends, like super low to, to super high end. They, your prices are pretty good. Yeah, I mean, you'll get big firms. Like we're talking in many industries, like big firms will charge you minimum 10 grand a month. Like, yeah, um, you know, we're small too, but I also don't want to be too, I don't want to grow too much either. Like I, Yeah, well, you have a really impressive list of, of people you work with. It's not like nobody's, you know, so that's, which leads me into my next question. Like, how do you vet who you work with? Like, I'm sure you're getting requests to work with people and like, you must look and like, this isn't going to work out. Right. Yeah. So what, what, but on the flip side, you just said you're working with someone who like, we need to start from scratch. So you obviously saw some kind of potential there. Yeah. So how are you vetting clients? Um, we really just review everything. Like, do we think we could get pressed for them. <laughs> okay. Do you, do so you're we, honest with them. Like, I don't think this is going to work out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Some, we say no to people um, politely. <laughs> Sometimes, too, it's just we have too much going on. Okay. Like once we're working on a ton of shows, we're just, we're spread thin. So we're not going to say yes. So we say, okay, yeah, we could work with you, but maybe in six months. Or maybe Got in it. the fall. Maybe in the, uh, we just can't do it. Because we need to plan. Like, we need to plan what, what our workload is per month. Yeah, that's the worst is to get in a situation where we're completely overwhelmed and stressed out for months. Like that's not good. Yeah. Not good for anyone. Not good for anybody on earth. Yeah. So we uh, and then we look. Yeah, we look at the potential and and then we have to see if there's a certain amount of following. Like you know, if someone has a thousand followers. No, we're pro you know, it's not going to work. It's out. not going to work. They need to have some sort of. Um, they had to do some work before they or get to Or there you. needs to be a momentum. Even if they haven't had, doesn't matter if they we work, haven't had a gallery show or a collab with brands yet. But they've got a really big following. They're getting momentum. They sell out. They do series. They sell it right away. They do commit. They're growing. And then, okay, we feel like they're on a spot where we can help them out. Got it. So we kind of have, it's really hard to say, but it's really case by case. Okay. I was wondering, because I feel like this is hypothetical, but there's people out there that are just wealthy from wealthy fame. And they're like, hey, I decided I want to be a famous artist. Mm -hmm. I have no experience, but I have a ton of money. Make me an artist. I'm sure there's, you probably, those come across your door too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which unfortunately works in the art world yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've gotten that before. Um, but then it depends on the art too. Like we have to look, we look at the art and this is like. I guess there probably is a little bit of personal. Do you like the art? other people doing the exact same thing that looks the same. Yeah. Like that, what's special? What's your uni unique value proposition? You know, like that term that we use in marketing. Yeah. What is unique about you? Like, what's your story? Because people, it's all about stories. They write yeah. about stories. They, people have to be in, interesting. We have to present you in an interesting way that's interesting to them. Of so, course. Like, what is your story? Like, what's your background? And that's what we all want to talk about, right? Our story. <laughs> yeah. So that has to be part of it as well. And then, yes, the art. But it's both of those combined. You yeah. as the person. Um, obviously, it helps if you have an interesting background and you're great to talk to people and you're, you know, you're lovable and press like you, that works too. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, they hit it off with you and they, they really love you and you're working and boom. Oh, great. This great piece feature just came out. Yeah. That yeah. happens all the time. Of course. So it's a lot of those as well. But yeah, I know a lot of artists too are shy or they don't like to be in camera so much. So that works out too. So I, I can speak from experience so that like, to, you know, there's so many in terms of like being yourself and everything, like when I got successful, I was so afraid to let people know who I was. Cause I didn't want to like, what's that? Like you stack, stack a house of cards. Mm. And I felt if I let, let too much of myself out, the public might not like that. And I'll stop selling work. But then I realized like, just fuck it. Like I am yeah. who I am. Like it's better just be yourself. Yeah. And actually I've, I've noticed that cause we've had some European clients and I was just there and Compared to American clients, or European clients, it's very different because they're they're more like on the fence about being known and putting themselves out there. That's the thing. Like, and in the yeah. U.S., it's just part of the culture. It is fame culture. Yeah, you know the whole PR, the marketing. It's like it's just part of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I get it. I, I get that point. But at one point, it's important. Like at one point, you're going to grow. At one point, you're going to need a studio manager. At one point, you're going to need assistance. At one point, you're going to need to in any industry, you're going to need to market yourself. But also, it's not. It's also doing it well. Yeah. You know, market yourself well. Yeah. You know, specific publications you want to be in and um, ha have someone that knows what they're doing. Like yeah. also too, we say you, doing it yourself, it's super awkward. First of all, pitching yourself to the editors, it's awkward. Yeah. Also, we talk to press differently. It's not how when you send a brand, send something 
a newsletter to their customers, it's not the same way that we talk to press. We don't talk to press that way. Okay. There's specific ways. And then every press, we kind of know, we start knowing who, like, who they are, what they like, what they don't like. We're not going to pitch this client to this one. She's not going to like, I know right away. Boom. Got it. We move her on the other list. Yeah. Like, so that's how like strategic we get because we have to be, um, and we don't want to annoy them either. We don't want to send press something that we know it's not going to be interesting to them. Yeah. I'm sure there's plenty of firms out there that just throw everything. It yeah. It's like we don't just falls on deaf ears. take all our lists and just mass something out. Like we have to go through. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and take the t same thing for the invites. Like, um, yeah. Who are we inviting to our events? They make sense. Does it make sense? There's a, there's a certain finesse there, isn't there? Yeah. Even, even and, this. And that's why there's takes a lot of time. And that's what I'm saying. There's so much background that we do that people don't see. Um, like when we say effort, you know, there's a lot of effort that goes into everything. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have anything else you want to talk about before we hang up here? How do people find you? What's your website? Um, so we have, um, yeah, sure. The website is Maximus Communications and um, the Instagram as well. Um, yeah, normally, um, that's normally where you can find us. Um, we do have um, overviews that we send clients of kind of the work that we do more like in depth. That when someone reaches out, we'll send them a book, uh -huh. like an overview. They'll get more information, and we we'll norm, we normally send them that, and then we'll send them um, a list of our services and fees for all different types of things. We normally that's normally how we start off, and then then we'll have a call. We normally have like a thirty minute call, and then we can go from there. That's normally how we start off. Right on, cool, Maxine. Thank you so much for your time. Of course, thanks for having me. Of course, see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. You know, maybe you have questions or opinions about what we talked about on this episode. Maybe you have your own questions about your art career or are just looking for some advice. Shoot us an email and we'll answer your questions on a future episode. You can email us directly on our website, cleanbreakpodcast.com. And just a reminder that all our past episodes are available there, as well as a ton of free resources, guides, and tips on how to make more money with your art and get more people interested. This podcast is produced by Elijah Walsh, theme song by Ditch David, Additional research by Ikram Dadar. I want to thank Patrick, Jason, and the Always Art team. My name is Matt Gondek. I'll crash you next time.